Hey, listen up there, YouTube. Chip here with the Iconic Sports Cycle Moto Vlog. What's up? Hey, guys. Just want to tell you this morning, I have a little experience this week with the uh, at a little thrift store. Uh, my wife and I went into a thrift store, and I was wearing a T-shirt with the uh, Israeli Air Force uh, insignia on it. And I was approached by an elderly woman who was a uh, volunteer at the thrift store. And she uh, asked me if I was uh, related or you know, had some association with the Israeli Air Force. She, uh, she uh, indicated that she thought that, that they were the good guys. Um, I explained to her, no, that uh, just wear the shirt in support of uh, the Israeli people. Um, I, got it at, I also got that at a thrift store. Um, but I, I always wear it proudly because, um, you know, like, again, I'm a, a big supporter of uh, Israel. In the, uh, especially now with the challenges they're up against. Um, but we uh, got into a really uh, engaging conversation, my wife and I did, uh, talking to this uh, woman. Um, turns out she was from Poland, and as a young woman, uh, she would she'd go to school and um, she'd pass by the American Embassy, and she always dreamed and prayed that one day she'd come to America. And uh, somehow, those uh, prayers were answered, and she was able to make it over here. Uh, she was able to uh, build a life here, and uh, she started a, got a job out here at the Kennedy Space Center, and she met a uh, young man that was from a... Uh, South American country. She didn't uh, say which one, but she said it was an oppressive uh, regime there. And he escaped up here and got a job here as well. And they got married and lived the American dream. And uh, after having a, you know, a conversation with her, you know, she she came to this country uh, looking for something better. Um, she found it. She uh, was very happy to be very very proud to be call, call herself an American. She said, in fact, that was the proudest day of her life when she became an American citizen. I think that's uh, that some, says something. But, uh, you know, there was some cost involved in that. You know, I mean, she just didn't, uh, you know, come over the border or drop out of an airplane somewhere. She just, uh, she did everything the right way. She went through the process. She learned the language. Uh, she understood the dream and its value. Uh, she, she became part of America. She didn't try and change it to make it more like where she was from. Uh, nor to, apparently did her husband. Uh, they both became Americans and were very... Uh, very proud of living the American dream, but uh, recent events in the world, she's uh, starting to rethink that a little bit, and, and not that she regrets coming here. That's not not what she indicated at all. But uh, but she said that hey, if she was in the same situation, if she was a young girl in uh, Poland again, living in uh, under oppression, and um, looking at America, she doesn't think that uh, it would be something that she would pursue. She doesn't think that that would. Uh, she would want to pursue an American dream as it, it is as it stands today, um, which I think is a shame. I think that uh, you know, uh, you know, when France gave us the Statue of Liberty as a as a beacon of hope, you know, uh, you know, they looked to, at the American you know way of life and said, "Hey, look at the great things America is doing." You know, look, you know, people should be more like America. And then when American leadership started looking at Europe and going, hey, we should be more like that, uh, things started uh, kind of derailing a little bit, you know. Um, so, you know, I'm thinking that she's probably not the only one that's thinking that, uh, you know, America isn't the land of opportunity that it once was. You know, even as an American, even being born and raised here, and I, you know, the American dream, as I remembered as a kid, has drastically changed. You know, I... I used to, uh, you know, think I could accomplish anything, and you know, now I'm looking at, you know, I, I, I don't really think I can anymore, and, it, and it's because the government's in my way. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't attempt to do uh, start a business today. Um, I've done it several times in the past, and done it, you know, because I thought, hey, I could do better for myself than you know being employed by somebody. Now the, uh, now now the the red tape and the you know insurance requirements and all the different things you have to do to be in business you know it's just uh, a nightmare you know you're better off well I don't know if you're better off but I mean it seems safer to go to work for somebody else um, you know you're you're not opening yourself up to uh, liability for things you know so again this is just my opinion you know I'm you know I'm looking at the uh, world as we live it now uh, America as we live it you know uh, you know, we um, used to be a land of opportunity where, you know, people came from all over the world. Um, most of the time they did it the right way. You know, they came through a regular immigration process. Um, you know, now we have a influx of refugees heading their way. I'm not sure how that's going to work out. 
I really don't trust the vetting uh, of this this uh, current uh, government that we have. Um, I think that uh, we'll be heading for a lot of trouble if we don't do this properly. Um, it's not the widows and orphans that I'm worried about. It's the uh, the military age people that um, you know, and I, and I know that's right out of the headline, so I know that I'm just kind of spooing what I've heard. But uh, you know, I pay attention. You know, I I know that's what's coming. I, I've seen what it's doing in Europe and Greece, and. Uh, you know, I don't really think that's a good idea to bring here, you know. I think that we ought to send a clear message that, you know, that type of behavior and um, type of uh, ideology won't be tolerated here. Um, and I don't think we're sending that message at all. I think we're sending that uh, the message that, uh, you know, this radical ideology is going to be uh, accepted and coddled and, and um, you know, uh, allowed to uh, flourish here. And I think that's the wrong message. So, hey, just my opinion. Again, uh, you know, the news cycle is just my opinion of the news. You know, I don't, uh, you know, I don't claim to have all the answers. Again, I'm not a politician. I'm not, uh, I'm not the smartest crayon and, you know, the smartest guy in the, in the world, you know, the brightest crayon in the box. But, um, you know, I do have an opinion and I, and I do pay attention to what's going on in the world. And, uh, you know, I, I like to have the conversation. And I think that's the problem. I don't think enough people are paying attention and I don't think enough people are having the conversation. I think it's really important that, um, you know, we get with people that have the ideas and have those conversations because the people that are making the decisions have an agenda. It's not our agenda. It's not the things that we want. It's not the things that are important to us, but it's important to them. So, uh, you know, they're just, they just use us to get the power that they need to, uh, well, to promote their agenda and, and to uh, do the things they want to do to keep them in power. Well, not necessarily the best thing for us. So it's time to look at some new options, and it's time we had some conversations about them. So I certainly encourage you to, uh, you know, give me some feedback. Uh, look, look forward to hearing from you. If you have any uh, comments that you'd like to post or questions, just uh, please post them below. I'd be happy to get back with you on any of those things. And again, this is Chip from the Iconic Sports Cycle Moto Vlog. Talk to you real soon. Bye.